Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ask Us Anything. We're so excited to be here on 719 uh, for our Sunday little juncture where the co-founders and some lovely uh, participants ask us some questions, and we hopefully give some anatomic answers. Uh, I'm here with the amazing ID co-founder team. I'm Dr. Kathy Dooley, one of your co-founders of Immaculate Dissection, uh, chiropractic rehabilitative specialist, uh, working hard to try to become an acupuncturist of anywhere close to Dr. Anna Folkmer's regard, and also an anatomist. I uh, love to teach anatomy. So uh, also with us, the amazing Dr. Anna Folkmer. Are you on mute? Yeah, you're, 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 you're muted, Anna. <laughs> she, oh, I thought she was giggling, and that's why she was muting herself. <laughs> she can't unmute? Oh, no. Why can't I unmute her? Sorry, Anna. I don't there we go. Hi. Hey. I couldn't know you either. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because I'm not listed as a co-host. So I'm giving wouldn't... you a co-host right now. Done. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> I'm Dr. Fulcomer. Um, super excited to be here. One of the, uh, the uh, co-founders of ID and I'm an acupuncturist and an anatomy instructor, and we are super excited to field your questions. So um, send them on in. Thanks for being here. Uh, Danny Quirk, also co founder, amazing anatomic artist. Uh, Danny, your floor. Hey, everybody. Uh, Danny here. Uh, yeah, just uh, artist for Immaculate Dissection. Do you know, work as uh, medical and anatomical instructions? and a uh, total anatomy dork. So excited to be here and uh, hang out with you guys for the time being. <laughs> we love being dorks with you. Uh, we wanted to uh, field a, a couple of questions uh, from, uh, <laughs> to kind of save Anna some time. Uh, just the, the fact that we get a, still a ton of questions for like, what is the ID Collaborative? And does that mean you're getting all the ID online courses in the ID Collaborative? Or like, what is the ID Collaborative versus the ID coursework? So. We wanted just to, um, while you're stimulating your questions for our live participants, uh, we wanted to just break down what uh, things that we offer. As you guys probably understand, um, we at this time, we don't have uh, any kind of in-person courses uh, due to uh, the pandemic that's going on for COVID-19. Uh, and we are so sorry that we won't be able to, to come near you uh, possibly uh, in, in these next few months, but uh, we are very excited for the future and we do hope that we will be able to do that. Uh, in absentia of an online course or in, in person course, we do have online courses and the online courses can be used um, with, when it's ID courses can be used as in-person tuitions. Like you can use the money that you spend on the online course and use it towards an in-person tuition in the future with no expiration date. So we were thinking, okay, well, if someone wants to take an in-person course in the future, and hopefully this pandemic is over, they shouldn't be penalized for taking the online course. They should be able to take that tuition and place it towards an in-person course. The converse is also true. If you take an in-person course, then you have access to the online material as well. So you lose nothing which is what we want. We want a win-win situation where you learn all about anatomy from the ID team and our ID perspectives. And you also have access to things right now to learn without having to, I don't know, pay some type of deficit for it uh, or take some type of deficit for it. So uh, we wanted to uh, walk you through the website just so you can kind of find what courses may be right for you. People always email us too and ask us, what course is right for me? And that is so personal, it's so hard to answer. So our quick answer to you will always be, take what resonates. A lot of people will uh, start at the beginning thinking that IDs are levels, but they're not, they're parts. Um, and just to ease in conversation, we call them ID one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, so we don't make you take them in any order, and that's also listed on the website. But um, some people like to choose to take one and then go through. And when you take them online, it really doesn't matter as much. But if you're taking them in person, you have to wait for something to come around, possibly, uh, to you know, for your travel purposes. But for online courses, it won't matter uh, for sure. And the in-person really doesn't matter. So to walk you kind of through that, we just wanted to, to take you on a little glimpse of our website. So um, let me just pull up that screen. I have it all pulled up for you. And so if you go to immaculatedissection.com, and I lied, it's not up, so bye-bye, but I'll pull it up right now. And let me just share that with you. 
And you guys can see this okay? And Anna even did an amazing pop-up for you so that when you go to the website, it says, hey, you wanna take stuff online? Yeah, take me there. That way you don't have to worry about having to look for it. But Dr. Folkmer has also done this amazing job of creating these hyperlinks at the top that give you course descriptions of each of our Immaculate Dissection courses. You can meet us and learn more about us, the IDE teaching team. Uh, you can sign up directly for the courses under sign up. ID Collaborative we'll talk about is our online learning hours that we do every week, at least uh, one hour, sometimes two. Um, reviews and video testimonials. And then if these did not answer the questions, please make sure you read these first and then you can hit contact us. But typically most of your questions will be found, found right here to the left of contact us. And then down here, a lot of people don't realize it, but these are hyperlinks. Let's say you're interested in uh, the online course for ID1. Uh, you can click on that and it'll list out a way for you to go directly to uh, read uh, what it's about and how you can sign up. Um, but course descriptions, if you just click on that, just to kind of understand what we cover, um, Anna has listed out all of the objectives for each course. So of course you can go onto our Instagram and, and onto our YouTube and kind of see videos from the courses, which are always very fun. On Instagram, we post a lot of our concepts so that you can learn like what you would learn in each course. So you get really nice uh, vignettes, if you will, uh, of what we cover. But Immaculate Dissection uh, Core Concepts covers a lot of the central anatomy of the middle. So abdominal, lumbo, pelvic stability. Uh, we do, of course, uh, anatomy lecture, palpation, and most importantly, assessment and corrective strategy. And all of this is done with visualizations from Danny Cork, which is just really, really special. Uh, you won't find it anywhere else. We can guarantee that. He's uh, uh, extreme talent, as is Dr. Folkmer. So you're just not going to find people more dedicated to teaching you what core concepts actually mean. So uh, I do want, if you're into the core, uh, the core is at the root of everything. So a lot of people like to start with one. Uh, you are not obligated to do so. If you are masterful at said core, then by all means go to something else. Or maybe you're really interested in lower extremity. Maybe you yourself have a hip or lower extremity problem. And maybe you'd be really interested in, you know, doing the lower extremity coursework. So we'll teach you very dense course, this lower extremity one. It covers everything from below the pelvis into the bottom of the foot. So it's the most amount of total anatomy of any course. But again, it's not a level, it's a part. So uh, if that's too overwhelming for you, you say, oh, I'm more interested in shoulder. I don't even know if I even like the hip. Let me go to upper extremity first. And uh, upper extremity course, of course, is very popular because people get very confused with shoulder assessment, elbow assessment. So uh, we like to make things as easy as possible for people by giving them a standard operating system for shoulder assessment and upper extremity assessment in total. Uh, and then neck, jaw, and hand, with this also involves the grip power. Uh, this is, has become a very popular course as of recent. I would say in the last year, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback about this course because the neck, as Danny has drawn here, looks kind of scary with all the massive amount of anatomy packed into one place. Um, I know personally, this is the area of my thesis and I made it that way because I found it very confusing. <laughs> so the only way for me and my very dense skull to make it easy for myself was to struggle with it through a thesis process. And, uh, and then I'm really glad that I did because if you understand this area, it carries over into swallowing, jaw movement, neck movement, and even some of the limb movement for the upper extremity. So, and of course, goes back to the core as well. So uh, we love covering that. Um, the peripheral nerve entrapment concepts we actually premiered, uh, is that 2019? Yeah, I'm forgetting what year it is. <laughs> uh, we premiered this and uh, it was very well received and the online version as well. Uh, you can see Danny's amazing work here. It's just really, really beautiful anatomy painted by Danny. Uh, and we have what I think is, is a really formidable course for doing nerve assessments. And uh, I think that it's excellent. People really enjoy it. I also think I had probably one of the most fun days ever uh, on the first day of this course with Danny and Anna. Uh, there was just lots of laughter and, you know, it's just really hard material, I think, nerves. And so people get kind of nervous. <laughs> That's a Dannyism. And then they, <laughs> they, uh, they don't really study them and they say, oh, maybe you should go to a neurologist or they'll pass it off to another practitioner. Rather than saying, you know, let me really look into this. I was uh, handling an online question today, um, wasn't for ID specifically, uh, but it was in my community here in Colorado. And they uh, were asking about numbness and tingling to the lateral thigh. 
And I know that Danny and Anna will immediately say, lateral pharmacutaneous nerve, look at the entrapment sites, make sure it's not L5 radiculopathy, make sure it's peripheral neuropathy. And, and uh, I didn't even have to ask them because I knew that they were going to be uh, with that one. And we hope our ID5 attendees would see it, the same thing, to know when to differentiate sclerotome pain versus radiculopathy, which is nerve root pain, versus organ referral, versus peripheral nerve entrapment. And uh, it's just a really, really fun course. Uh, uh, our our uh, local friend of ID, Daya Fish, she gave me uh, permission to say that she said it was worth the course materials within the first five minutes. And that made me so happy. She was like, all people need is an hour. They need an hour and they're gonna be completely bought in to, to ID5. I was like, oh, that's so great. Cause she's taken other IDs and, and for her to have that big of a response to ID5 was just really special. She said it was the course she always needed on nurse. So uh, with her permission, I was really excited to share that thought <laughs> with you guys. Um, ID6 is anatomy at movement subsystems. And we had beta tested this, uh, folks, was it two times or three times? Three times? Three beta tests. Australia, uh, London, and no, four times. Anna's on mute. Anna, can you unmute? I can't unmute you. Why won't it let me? Why is it muting Dr. Anna if she's host? I don't know. I'm gonna stop the screen share for a second and figure it out. Um, we we did Australia first. And then we did London and Japan. That's what she's trying to tell me, Japan. Sorry, Anna, <laughs> I'm very bad at lip reading, clearly. Uh, why is she muted? Anna, it says that you're muted and it won't let me unmute you. I wonder if Danny can, he's a host. Shoot. Maybe it's Anna, important. yeah, I doesn't, yeah. Maybe Anna, maybe you, yeah, yeah, I, put, I made you a host. That's so weird. So, uh, yeah, and it's not letting me make you a host now. Maybe if you if you go bye bye Anna, and then we let you back in. Wait, would that work? I don't know. Okay, bye. <laughs> um, we'll let her back in and make her host. Yeah. So um, the the ID six course is movement subsystems, and it's basically looking at the body and movement patterns. Uh, and they were first coined by Andre Valimine. Uh, made popular by various other individuals, but Andre Bellini's research uh, w was the cornerstone of understanding them. So um, it still won't let me make Anna. Hmm. Anna, it still won't let me make you host. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe if I pin your video, would it let me unmute you? No. It Zoom has attitude today. It really just wants me to talk, which is something I definitely don't want to do. Maybe if I unmute, oh, let me pause this recording. Sorry. Sorry about that, Dr. Folkmore. We're so glad that you're back though. Thank you, Danny, for saving the day. And uh, the I was just saying uh, in your absence that the ID6 course was about uh, the movement subsystems and Andre Williams work. And so um, to go back to share screen just for a hot second, um, let's say, okay, I, ID one through six coursework, very cool. They're three hundred dollars a piece. That that can be used uh, towards tuition for a live course in the future. Awesome. If you want to sign up for one, you can go to sign up and uh, go to each of them. Like they have the online courses listed. So if we go to sign up, you can see the online store and payment plans. By the way, are only available for in-person courses and likely um, not available to you at this time because we don't have any in-person courses. But um, the online courses are found right here. So you just click on the online courses, the picture is hyperlinked, and then you can see everything listed. So in case you were having trouble with that part, they're all right there. Okay, so Anna's done a really beautiful job of making a very user-friendly site. So uh, thank you, Anna, for that. And let's say, okay, I've taken ID online coursework, or ooh, $300 is a big investment for me right now. I don't know if I'm right for it. I don't even know if I like these people. Let me go to the ID Collaborative and see what that's about. So the ID Collaborative is our uh, hour-long learning talks. And it's basically the stuff that we don't have time to cover in Immaculate Dissection coursework, like specific things. Like uh, last Friday, we covered the first part of thoracic outlet syndrome. And uh, it's a really uh, interesting topic of neurovascular impingement uh, in the peck and neck area. And, uh, and on Tuesday, we'll cover part two of it. So we don't really have the time because we're so engrossed in teaching you how to do anatomy and assessment based uh, for all things. 
uh, in uh, the ID 136 coursework. ID Collaborative, we can talk about specific topics. And so it fills in gaps if you take an ID online coursework or and or it can also encourage you, like if you really like learning from us, you may really love the, uh, the online courses. Because uh, if you like our teaching style, if you like the way that we cover things, it's a great way for you to find out for a very inexpensive price. So the topics are listed here. Everything we've done in the past retroactively can be purchased and anything in the future that we have. We have our schedule, I think, through August. So um, it, it's just a lot of really awesome topics. Uh, some really popular ones that we've done, uh, breathing, uh, Bell's palsy, the gate one was super popular, just us kind of doing a, an overview of gate phases. Um, which is kind of a teaser to our ID6 coursework. Um, advanced breathing training, we had Jonathan Fernandez, breathing expert on, that was a real treat. And uh, talking about AccuPoints, holy moly, your art, my head wanted to explode, I learned so much in those two hours. And, and it's just so much great information. Um, we also got some really great feedback about the scoliosis ones, the lymphatic, we have another lymphatic one coming up with Daya and, and Perry Nicholson. Uh, just really exciting topics. Megan Colbert was fantastic with a spinal cord injury. I referred one of my patients to her for counsel and they came back saying, Megan is the best thing ever. So we have some really awesome guest speakers that come on. And the whole reason what we're called the ID Collaborative is that we want to know and collaborate with each other, with you, with guest speakers on what you guys want. And so people send us ideas and we start to employ uh, investigations into uh, meta-analyses, the research, uh, some of the more progressive treatments, some of the old standard treatments. Uh, we cover a lot of stuff and people tell us, you know, they, that bought the membership for $209. They're like, how is this only $209 for a minimum 52 talks? And at the rate we're going, it's going to be more like 104, right? We do, you know, two per week since we've started on May 15th. And, you know, Danny and Anna and I are just having a freaking blast doing these and our community is really loving it. So and I don't know about you guys, it's really keeping me going during a, a time that's really challenging. It's making me excited to learn again and be around people of like mind and people ask such great questions in the collaborative. So just really exciting stuff. But if $209 is an intimidating price uh, right now, because it's a lot of money out of the box, then you may want to invest in just one talk at a time They're 20 bucks. And you can use that $20 towards a coupon towards buying the membership if you decide that you like it. So, uh, so you can do like little tiny amounts, which at $20 is a little bit more cost effective for people that just like, I love, you know, talking about the kettlebell swing, or I love talking about acupuncture. Let me just get a taste and see if it's right for me. And then, ooh, I may be interested in the entire collaborative membership. But the collaborative membership is not the ID online coursework. Those are separate entities. The ID collaborative is weekly learning hours where we all talk about anatomy. And the ID coursework is 15 hours of strategic standard operating system on movement assessment, palpation, uh, and corrective strategies. So um, not the same. And their descriptions are right here, on, again, on this amazing website designed by none other than Dr. Anna Holtzmark. So uh, if you have questions that we didn't answer, they're probably going to be here. But if you really think that they're not, then don't be afraid to hit contact us or maybe just come on to one to ask us anything talks and, and chat up. One thing I will throw out there that um, is a frequently asked emailed question is with regards to the online versions of our ID one through six classes right now, those are not live. Those are pre-recorded. You have access to them forever. You don't, it doesn't run out in a year. It doesn't, you, you, once you have it, you have it. And we want you to continue to use it and continue to refer to it and continue to study it because it, it's just going to continue to enhance your practice skills. Um, but you can also do it at your own pace. So, you know, you don't have to worry about time zones. You don't have to worry about you know, internet connection and accidentally missing something. You don't have to worry about if English is your second language, um, the digestibility of it. Like this is absolutely something that's self-paced for you and, um, and something you will not lose access to. So um, just to throw that out there because we, I, I think I get that email every single day. Yes. And it's, um, people may think, okay, it's not a webinar, it's not live. Well, then I can't ask them questions. Also not true, because when you purchase the online coursework, you get access to our ID forum for that part. So let's say you signed up for ID one core concepts, you're interested in core, you uh, have gone through the 15 hours of instruction, you've gone through the standard operating system that we have, and you have questions. We, we invite people to the forum to ask questions. So you're, you're available to ask questions there. And I think that 
a 15 hour course is an introduction into a process and that the process is the result. You have to use the process. And so it's not like you're getting a digital implantation of how to be good at ID in 15 hours. You're getting an exposure to the way that we think, which is, you know, very groundbreaking for a lot of people or very different for a lot of people. And so you want to take your time and digest and then ask questions. And we want to provide a safe and learning environment, but we also are going to hold you responsible for standard operating system. So we teach you a system and people are going to, some people kind of throw out things sometimes, or uh, one person had, had talked about ID one material on the ID two page today. And I was like, nope send your question over so we will keep you very organized in your thought process and it's not meant to be mean mommy okay it's more meant to be like be respectful of your community by making sure to have clarity and if you don't have clarity we will make sure to ask you for it and and then you're like oh okay sorry about that let me here's here's what i found with my patient fantastic now we can advise you um, so that way people can ask questions and stimulate thought but also we hold you responsible to the material uh, because we who doesn't need to be accountable to somebody? Everybody needs to be accountable to themselves first and then to an environment. So uh, we want to provide that safe environment, uh, but safe does not mean without personal uh, responsibility. It, it absolutely, it needs to, you need to be able to follow standard operating system. So if you're understand, not understanding what that means, then you need to take an ID course because we have these flow charts. So we have these assessment checklists. And so we make you follow a pilot checklist. Everyone's very thankful that the pilot goes through the million checks that they do before the plane takes off, right? You are that pilot with your clients, with yourself, hopefully. And if you're not, we're going to teach you how to be a pilot with yourself. Because even as, as great as you may think, as much as you may postulate that you have the right answer, uh, it's the, the client patient deserves a standard operating system to make sure you haven't missed any pieces. And we believe in the system and that's why we teach it. So each one of the six IDs has a standard operating system with a, a slight uh, deviation for ID5, just because we have to teach you how to do a really quality neurological exam and the neurological exam is the standard operating system. So just slightly bit different. Um, so that is in a nutshell what we do as far as our online work. So ask us anything on Sundays is always free. Come in, ask your questions. Uh, but um, if you need a little structure in your thought and, and you want more to learn more of a movement assessment based anatomical practice, then ID online coursework is for you. The ID collaborative is a stimulation of thought about particular specific topics. And oftentimes we don't get to go on, into them at the depth that we do in the ID coursework. So ID collaborative stuff is for ID people and ID people can take ID collaborative stuff as well. And people outside the ID community can take ID collaborative stuff. But if you want to take ID coursework, you have to do the online coursework as a minimum. So we're not going to answer, you know, our coursework questions unless you've taken the coursework, but we will, you know, this, Anna does a beautiful job with the descriptions. Just write them, just read them and say, Oh, I wonder what they cover at this course. Boom. It's right there. So we're just going to send you to the same website list. Cause like, we just want to make sure not to have to type it all out. We don't want to make sure we don't miss anything and we haven't missed anything in our um, course objectives. Right. So it's all listed out there. So we hope that you guys uh, will, dive in and enjoy with us. Uh, we're having so much fun answering the questions from people we haven't met yet <laughs> that have taken the online coursework. Uh, people seem to really be using the coursework and having a lot of fun with it. And uh, we're so excited to, to help you with it. And so again, you can take them in any order. If, if that's not right for you right now, uh, or if it's not in your price point, then you can do um, an, an ID collaborative course and see if you're even just like talking to people that are anatomy enthusiasts. Maybe it's not right for you. Maybe it's not your jam. But uh, it's definitely our jam, which we're hoping if you're here listening to this, that it might be yours as well. Um, Anna, you had like an awesome experience with a culinary class. Do you mind sharing that with Because it's just, it was so good that I, I wished that we had recorded it so that they could hear it. Um, do you mind sharing your experience with this amazing culinary artist that's vegan? Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, recently, um, just to kind of, decompress and I, I, I love to cook. I love plant-based cooking. And so um, just to kind of be a, feel like I'm a student again and, and have some, some stress relief and all that stuff, um, I've recently signed up for a year-long um, online culinary program. And um, the whole time I've, I've been in class, it's $350 for the whole year. And 
um, as I'm taking this class, I, I keep saying like, how is this not more expensive? How is this not more expensive? And <laughs> my husband, I mean, I, I was expecting to get a bill at the end of it. And my husband pointed out to me very astutely, he goes, well, aren't your ID classes $300? And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I, it, was, it was really validating to be a part of a community because there's so many parallels about this particular program with, what, um, uh, with, with our ID work. They're separate fields slightly, but, um, you know, it, it has all of the things. That, once I was in it, I realized why I was so attracted to it, and it's because it really is kind of a mirror image of ID in the sense that it has its own community. It has uh, constant support. It has supportive videos. unlimited access, like all of the things that I love about ID, this program also has. And I'm like, how is this not more? How is this not more? And so I, and I just kept saying it over and over and over again. And, um, and, and then my husband was kind of like, this is actually very similar to what you're already doing. And it was just nice to have that perspective. Um, because I, you know, I, I, I feel, I feel supportive and it feels good to be in part of a, a, Sort of a community and that is exactly what we've tried to create for you guys with our courses as well um, so it's nice to have that reinforced and you know feel what it feels like on the other side oh no are you stuck in participant purgatory too <laughs> danny can you unmute kathy you're the one with the powers <laughs> Thank while you're you. doing oh good okay um one thing i will say one more uh quick thing about the our id courses actually is that a lot of people say which one do i start with which one do i start with and kathy you touched on that and you said you know which one resonates with you um what i will say is if for people who need structure and for people who are just like no just do this one first if I had to pick one to do first, I would suggest core. It's not required. It is somewhat suggested just because you see it come up so frequently in the other classes and we refer back to it. So, you know, if you have one class to take and you take three, but then you hear us refer back to one, we don't want you to be frustrated by that. It is very, you know, it, it, there's a lot of foundational, um, uh, information there about how we approach other regions of the body. Um, you know, we even refer to it in, um, in ID5, which is, you know, peripheral nerve entrapment. So I think that if you have to pick one, that's a great place to start, but do not feel like you have to start there. You are welcome to start anywhere. And if you want to do a, a five, three, four, two, one thing, that's also fine. You know, you don't have to do one through six or six to one. You can if you want to, but you do not have to. So I just wanted to throw that out there. If you need someone to tell you, start with this one, then start with core. Um, but then after that, none of the other ones matter because you're just gonna either go to the lower extremity, upper extremity, or movement subsystems, or head and neck, or peripheral nerve entrapment. So lots of flexibility. We really just want this to be available to you guys. It's, it's a lot of fun. And it's not wrong when we move in two, in three, in four, and in six. We say to the person, have you cleared the core? And in five, we make them do breathing during nerve floss pendulums. So it, it, it's really smart to start with the foundation of ID1. Uh, if someone emails me, I have a really hard time answering it because I'm just like, it, when we did the in-person courses, it was a little harder to answer just because you might not have a course come near you that's ID1 for a calendar year, but ID3 is coming around the corner. So I would say, take that three, it's fine. And now I think with the options being opened up to take everything online, I would tell them, hey, you might wanna take ID1 online and then take ID3 in person if it's coming near you. Uh, I couldn't agree with that more. I, I think that, I mean, the ID, there's a reason why Danny and Anna and I built ID one first, we built core first because we knew how important it was to stabilize the center of mass for abdominal lumbo pelvic stability to be present in order to have any chance of having stability in the neck, in the jaw, in the hyoid, in the shoulders, in the legs, or any of the nerves coming out of the abdominal lumbo pelvis. <laughs> and certainly movement subsystems, the very first movement subsystem that we do is intrinsic core system, which 
we talk about an ID one. So uh, it's, it certainly would not be a waste of your cash to start with ID one. So uh, I, I put in a second vote. Danny, what do you think? Uh, if you had to recommend a, a course for them to take first for one through six? I'm wholeheartedly on board with starting with core. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very definitely the foundation of all the other courses and granted other ones kind of, you know, break into more specialized parts of the body and whatnot, but they all seem to loop back to core, especially in terms of, you know, building, building pressure, building a stable platform to move on. And it, it, it's just one of those things that it can quell any confusion and illusions back to core if you start off with that one, kind of having the foundation and the understanding of what it is that kind of talking about from the start. Um, but again, look, it, it is one of those things where it's, it, it's not needed, but it just enhances the experience by starting with, by starting with core, I'd say. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Uh, I second that motion as well. Third. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we've, frankly, I mean, if you're talking about expertise in this, we've done ID1 the longest. <laughs> so we have the most experience and have worked out all the kinks. I really do think um, we've done this course, I don't even know how many times, I lost count. But, oh God, I don't know. I mean, the first one would have been in January of 2015. Yeah, so. And we then we a lot of core. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it, at least fifty, at least yeah. fifty or sixty. And if you're coming to our office to see Dr. Folkmore or myself or one of the ID assistants, I mean, we're clearing your core first. Yeah. It's every patient, every visit, so it would be a really great place to start. And just like Anna's culinary class, it's funny how people are like three hundred dollars for online course, when you start to open it up and see all the hours that you're going to be like, whoa. And, and then when you start to study them and start to integrate them in, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that was cheap. And that's what most of the participants will say to us afterwards. They're like, $300 is a steal. That was a steal because of the amount of knowledge that I got from it. And the fact that I can take that $300 and put it towards the in-person course when the pandemic's over too, like I, I didn't lose anything. You know, if I, I do, if I benefit more from an in-person tactile experience, then I can certainly have it later and, and you know, get through that $300 tuition I paid towards the course, I haven't lost a thing, so. Yeah, and Kathy, the other interesting parallel, cause I mean, the whole time I've just been trying to like, you know, learn I, as a student, but also learn as another, you know, educator. Um, uh, and one of the other interesting parallels is that my biggest hesitation to signing up for this particular program was pure intimidation. I thought, I'm not, oh, I'm not good enough to do that class. Like, and, and I was, you know, I was seeing other students work and they were sharing stuff and I was like, oh, I can't, I don't, I can't do that. I don't like, I, I, I like, I have fun in the kitchen and I sing and dance and stuff, but I can't do that. And and then once I saw like how much support there was and I was like, wait, these people are actually a lot like me and, and being in it really boosted my confidence a lot. And so I was, it, it was just, it was such a huge light bulb that went off in my head because I've had the same, I've had our attendees tell us this. They'll say, I oh, really am interested in signing up, but I, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm early on in my career or I'm going to start, you know, we had an email today, somebody that said, I'm going to start physiotherapy school in the fall. Um, I don't know if I can take this yet. And I, I say, go for it. It is, you know, we encourage this. Look, we've had attendees show up because they've been in pain for a long time and they just want answers themselves. And those people are like so amazing in class. They come in and they get it. They have a blank slate. In some ways, that's even better. So we really have tried to make this as open and as friendly as possible for people. And, you know, it was just another interesting parallel where I was like, oh, this is exactly what people feel like when they come to us. And they say, you know, oh, I'm not really sure if that's for me or not, because I, I just don't know where I am in relationship to other people. Rest assured, we have seen everybody. We have seen people you know, super senior in their fields. We've seen people just starting off. We've seen people not even in their field. We've had people not even in this field turn into people in this field. So everyone is welcome. This is a family. This is a collaborative family and we love it and we want everybody to feel supported and encouraged. If you left an ID course not feeling like that, it would be shocking, 
just because it's a very warm and fun and funny environment. A lot of people, we use a lot of humor. I know that the three of us are pretty tired at the end of day two, <laughs> and we get a little giddy, and there's a lot of dancing and silliness, and we want you to have a really good time, and also, um, there's not a pressure element at all. It's just uh, be present. Be present and take in what you can. You can only take in maximum 18 minutes per hour of any instruction. And I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. That's just your cerebral filter. So, you know, if that's true, then even people that did take the course in person, they missed a lot. They missed more than two thirds every hour. So thank God everything is reported. So just, you know, enjoy and, and if there's an intimidation feeling, I know that's a very internal trigger for a lot of people uh, because anatomy in, in it itself is very <laughs> all encompassing. So that's why a lot of us, I know I, why I was taught it at kind of a surface level, um, just because I think my teachers were afraid to intimidate. And then I had this really, really great teacher in chiropractic school who was not afraid at all to intimidate the living crap out of us and made me study my butt off. And mostly it was partly out of respect for the fact that he was willing to, to push us. And then also because I knew anatomy was so important. And so I found anatomy very difficult, very, very challenging. And, uh, and I think part of, of what you'll see with Danny is that he makes it easier for people with visuals because that's how he makes it easier for himself. Anna finds really good parallels to life and she can just cut it right to the, oh my God, I never thought about it like that because she's really struggled to make things easy for herself as well. So what you're seeing in immaculate dissection coursework is three people that really struggled with anatomy a lot and we still study all the time, right? But we still, we enjoy it. And my husband likes to say the only difference between the master and the student is the resistance. You both have to push the boulder up the mountain. You have to do the same amount of work. Danny just doesn't have any resistance. He's like, you, I need to make this better. I'm making it better. And, and we'll hear him curse four letter expletives trying to make it better. You know, he's just like, you know, and you'll see his artwork and say, oh, that's perfect. And he'll be like, nope, there's a flaw in here, here, here. I can do better than that. And that's what makes Danny Quirk work, right? That's what makes him like drive. And Anna Faulkner is the same way. I, I, I'll think that she did like a perfect job teaching SOAS. And she'll come over to me and say, that was the worst piece of crap that I've ever done. And I was like, <laughs> And I'm like, that is impossible. And I feel the same thing. I'll tell these two over dinner. I'm like, that was a complete poop show. I can do a lot better than that. And they're like, Julie, really? that was great. And so we, we are also intimidated by anatomy, right? But it's okay to feel that way. It's probably normal <laughs> when you care about something to be like, oh my God. What, when you meet someone who like you are falling in love with, aren't you completely intimidated by the person? You're like, oh my God, what if they hear me fart? Or what if, they, what if I uh, don't say the right thing in front of their parents? Or anything that you care about is going to have that feeling that Anna's talking about of intimidation. And so I don't know. When I feel like that, I know I'm exactly where I need to be. So hopefully we give you that feeling, I guess, in a weird way, and then help you squash it through, you know, structure and, and encouragement and, and, and heart. We'll be, we're going to be hard on you in a good way. Like, you know, like, oh, make sure you stay to the standard operating system. Make sure you stay to the material. Why did you skip that step? Oh, don't skip it. Go back to your flow chart. Uh, where do I start at the flow chart? And, and, they, and oh, okay, we'll put you back on track because everybody needs that accountability, but, you know, also that inspiration and warm encouragement. I think you definitely will find that with our ID family, the idealists. We are the idealists. So uh, we're not seeing a lot of questions come through, but um, I think that that covers what we need to cover for today. Um, can I just show off a piece of your art, Danny? So Danny made, you saw a sneak peek of it with uh, peripheral nerve entrapments, the little uh, book thumbnail uh, that was on uh, the amazing website built by Dr. Folkmer. And you guys can see this okay. This is Danny's amazing drawing of thoracic outlet syndrome. And so he's showing you what we talk about in the ID collaborative talk last week on Friday. And then we're covering the rest of it on Tuesday uh, where we kind of cover the orthopedic testing, assessments and things like that of, of thoracic outlet syndrome. But you can see here the scalenes, you can see uh, the brachial plexus uh, roots and uh, trunks that are going into the interscaling triangle heading towards the axilla. You can see the subclavian vein in front of the anterior scaling, the subclavian artery behind it, which has different symptoms associated with where the impingement is. Uh, you can see subclavius drawn in, which is almost always left out in TOS pictures, but Danny put it in, which is why this is the best one. 
don't look at other TOS pictures, look at this one, this is the one. And then PEC minor, which everyone blames for everything, but you'll find in Immaculate Dissection, it is not always. Our post today on Instagram was about that. Uh, knowing when something is, is a problem here and when it's not. We, I see so many people that, where they've been rubbing out their pec minor and the problem was the clavius the whole time. So um, really interesting thing. And in, in ID, we know within five seconds if it's uh, pec minor or if it's clavius. And we'll teach you our cheat on Tuesday and then teach you again at ID3 when you want to learn the entirety of the assessment. Um, and then you can see the brachial plexus and now the axillary artery and vein going down into the arm where um, it's no longer thoracic outlet syndrome, then it's just peripheral nerve entrapments or, uh, and, and Dana gives you a little close-ups here of, of that from the side, which I love. I thought that was really beautiful where you can see, oh my God, that's really cool. Anterior to posterior views. Um, even in the cadaver lab, Anna was mentioning in our thoracic outlet talk on Friday, she was like, I can't see it looking like this. Everything looks like the same color. It's all covered in fascia and fat and it's skin. And it's actually really challenging and, and Danny's made it look actually very realistic, but also pop in a way that will, um, I mean, I think Netter somewhere in the universe is crying with approval and just saying, dude, for real, this is way better than I did. Thank you for not letting it just die with me. And thank you for improving upon my perfection. And it's, it's quite good. It's really, really quite good. And it, it, it it needs to be something that you focus on and learn so that when you have someone in your office with whole hand numbness and, and vascular compression and these signs that they'll go through on Tuesday, we'll go over the orthopedic tests that are associated with them. But, but also more than that, the ID assessment goes beyond orthopedic testing. Someone had asked in the question box, do you cover orthopedic testing in ID? And we said, absolutely not. Because um, orthopedic testing is something a lot of people already have value in, they already have done before. We do cover it in our study groups. We do cover the orthopedic test based upon our area in a study group. But we don't do it in ID because you've already been there. And now we give you ways to fill in the holes that orthopedic tests leave. And that's just some basic anatomic knowledge to put along with orthopedic testing. Part of the reason orthopedic testing has sometimes some questionable specificity and sensitivity is because it's not a holistic view that orthopedic testing is usually localized. Sometimes all the variables are, are not aligned like we do in ID. And so we, we want you to combine an orthopedic test or a regional exam that maybe you've learned with an ID assessment strategy, a flow chart. So uh, that's what we do. And so we don't, we don't really, I, I don't know if we've ever used the words TOS in ID3 when we show our assessments of this region, ID3 and four. I think we just call it, hey, whole hand numbness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Calling something thoracic outlet syndrome, some of our attendees haven't even heard of that. It's intimidating. So we just say, hey, I can talk to Grandma Betty or three-year-old Jane, and they probably are going to know what hand numbness is or tinglies into the hand, right? So we try to keep that simple and then go over the anatomy of what's happening rather than just call it a condition. Because then also you get stuck in condition-based therapies, and, and we try to stay away from that and make every single patient follow standard operating system no matter their condition. But the point of the ID collaborative is that we can talk about conditions now. And so the ID collaborative is where we can talk condition-based stuff. And the ID coursework is where we talk a general standard operating system for all conditions. That's all I got. I think it's perfect. I think it's perfect. Is that not just the most perfect picture? I love that picture so much. Oh. It really does. It, I mean, in those side angles, oh, they're so, so good. good. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to envision on your patient because you're like, holy crap, there's not a lot of space there to begin with. What if any of those joints that we discuss goes awry? What if there's a, a problem in positioning, which vast majority of TOS is position based? Like, what if there's like a repetitive micro trauma that's happening or a traumatic injury due to a car accident or blunt trauma, whatever, a fall? What if the, the position was never left and, and, and the spaces get cramped even more? And how would that present itself? That's why it looks terrible, right? Like Danny's drawing is perfect, but it looks like, like an evolutionary crap show. Like why is our system designed in this way where everything can crunch together going on? Because it's genius. It's a fail safe. It's making sure that if something does get messed up, that you have symptoms. So symptoms aren't a bad thing. Symptoms are helping diagnose what a practitioner sees with signs, which are objective. So with symptoms really help. 
And that's why I, I try to enlighten my patients. And I know Dr. Folkmer does the same. We say, oh, you got a symptom? Awesome. And they're like, it's not awesome. It's terrible. I'm like, actually, your body is brilliant. If you have a symptom, it's trying to give us a signal of where to look. And then they're like, whoa, I never thought of it. Because patients can catastrophize, right? I got numbness in the hand. This is a bad thing. And I'm like, you got numbness in the hand? Your body is genius. It's telling you there is a problem. Get to someone who can help you fix it if you can't fix it yourself. I guess the only thing I would ask Danny to maybe add in on Tuesday, maybe he can draw in a dotted cervical rib for us. I hate to read <laughs> a perfect, perfect picture. Maybe on one side only, Danny, because the, the one side is just like so perfect. Maybe it's like the dotted line just to, to show that congenital anomaly. But most TOS is not a congenital anomaly. Most TOS is poopy, poopy posture man uh, or woman. Um, and we, we need to, to fix what you know, posture means because a lot of people have no idea. It's just like, oh, I need to do this. Actually, well, no, because that would exacerbate certain forms of TOS. And like, oh, okay. Uh, so just understanding what it means to be in an alignment that supports the anatomy is, is very, very important. Um, someone asked a question here uh, addressing the seat belt affecting TOS. I love that you asked that. I will absolutely cover that on Tuesday during the talk. Um, seat belts, that whole like, compression of this area was part of my thesis. So you just asked the hot button question, uh, participant, uh, when it comes to like, sometimes when I'm driving, this is naughty a little bit. Okay. But if I'm feeling any kind of symptomatology, I, do you do this to Anna? You tuck the seatbelt under your armpit just for a minute. Totally. Just, okay. Yeah. Good. Danny, I wasn't sure if you did this ever, but I, I can tend to have a little interscaling triangle issue on occasion. And, um, and Anna, don't, don't spoil it for us because I know that Ted diagnosed your TOS for you and you're going to share it with us on Tuesday. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to uh -huh. spoil it. Um, so like for me, like if I feel like I'm driving and my hands start to get a little tingly or if I start to feel some funny sensations or some neck tension, I'll take the seatbelt just for a second and put it underneath, do a little bit of weird ID homework and then put the seatbelt back. And I did this just yesterday. So it, I did uh, it today. Okay. I know it's a little <laughs> dangerous because it doesn't cover the thorax at that point. So make sure you're in a place where you're driving a little slower and that people aren't, you know, be defensive uh, against what other people are doing against you, but, uh, or pull over the car and do your corrective if you will, but seatbelts um, absolutely can cause a uh, neck injury. Of course, they can save your life. Absolutely. Um, not just no, denoting that you should take it off, but um, it is something that can compress the interscaling triangle. It's lesser common. It's more likely to cause inferior belly of omohyoid syndrome, which can cause suprascapular neuropathy. And that's um, basically less TOS and more, because the seatbelt, the way it sits, it doesn't sit completely on the scaling. It sits a little off to the side. And uh, because of that, um, it, it can uh, create a more compression of uh, a swallowing issue and also an issue with external rotation and abduction. Uh, so we call it um, inferior belly of omohyoid syndrome. Uh, with that. But um, if someone already has a clavicular disorder and the, and the seat belt fits them kind of tightly, it can pull the clavicle down and it can encourage something called costal clavicular syndrome in some people. But I would say it's way less common, way less common. Uh, but um, seat belts definitely can irritate um, the inferior belly of omohyoid region, cause a little decentration of the humerus. So if you're working out right after you get out of your car, <laughs> if you're on the way to somewhere to work out, you probably don't want the seatbelt creating that. So make sure you fix the situation. That's a really good question. I was really excited to see that one. <laughs> Just like, oh, got to talk about my thesis twice. It's the only paper I have published. So <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. I kind of gave up on the research end. I'm very, very respectful of researchers. I just don't want to particularly do that type of work myself. I bow to them because it's really hard. Uh, and really arduous. Uh, I think Anna Folkmore would have been amazing at it. Probably Danny Cork too. But um, Danny, you have more published pa papers than I do with your artwork. I think you have several, right? For this region? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there, there, there's a few of them, but, but purely through illustrations as opposed to uh, words contributed. So. As if that's not a major contribution. I, I don't want to ask how many hours you spend on those illustrations. So. Uh, <laughs> These two are workhorses. Uh, very proud to be a part of this with them. Um, okay, I, I guess that's it. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you guys on the ID Collaborative if you're interested. Uh, we're always here on Sundays to answer your questions. Uh, not a lot of questions from the gallery today, but a couple of really, really good ones. So I'm really glad you guys came. And uh, Dr. Folkmore, you had something to add? Uh, no, there's, I believe there's. Oh, did I miss one?
questions. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. What is the ID team's thoughts on the causes of shin splints? Um, whoo -hoo, that's a loaded one. Um, shin splints, um, a lot of times are someone who is excessively pressing from the calf. Uh, and uh, a lot of times it's not even a problem with the calf. Uh, in our ID2 coursework, we show people, like if you have a tendency towards shin splints, to show someone if it's actually coming from their shin slash foot, or if the problem is coming from their hip. And in uh, 13 years of clinical practice, and myself included, since I had shin splints last week, um, it is 100% uh, of the time I practice a hip stability problem, and then you lose the hip stability and you start to propel uh, from the calf excessively. And shin splints are a periosteal reaction where the tibialis muscles will start to leave the shin, and the sharpie fibers that connect their tendons to their attachment start to pull the periosteum away from the bone and create a bone reaction. And that's why it's not serious, but it feels like death. And, and I made my husband very unhappy because <laughs> I got my shin splints because I had, what, I had not done enough of my centration exercises before I went on a hike. And there's a lot of hills in Boulder, obviously. And I came back and later on that night, I mean, I scared the crap out of him. I was like, oh my God, do I have deep vein thrombosis? Do I have like a problem? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is just shin splints, but it was searing discomfort along the shin. And uh, the next day I woke up with a minor version of it and I put myself through the ID assessments for ID2. And it was 100% coming from my relationship with gluteus medius and adductor longus. So I did my corrective strategy and I mean, it completely went away. So I'm not saying all shin splints are like that, um, Anna would probably tell you it's stomach channel. So do you want to tell them a little bit about stomach channel and the relationship with shin splints? Yeah, of course. The stomach channel is going to run right up the front uh, over the dorsum of the foot and then into, uh, into the shin and it's going to continue up into the thigh, up into the front of the torso and then all the way up into the face. And um, we, we see these um, uh, channel pathologies in, in Chinese medicine. We see them often um, uh, and the, there will be a certain movement to it. A lot of these people are very forefoot dominant. And again, you know, some of that can be the, uh, most of the time, particularly if it's bilateral, can be the, the pelvic stability. Um, and then, you know, trying to sort of use ground force contact to help encourage that in the right way. But in Chinese medicine, we'll often see a lot of um, what Chinese medicine would call stomach fire, which is this sort of, uh, you, you have this like, sort of insatiable need to kind of continue moving forward, whether it's, um, you know, there, there may be, you know, some appetite issues involved with that, but there may also be things like a need to constantly like feed yourself stimuli and input. And these people take a lot of coursework and they are just sort of very much sort of constantly trying to move forward. Um, so in Chinese medicine, we would also look at it from that perspective as well. Um, you know, in my practice, I'm going to use both of these modalities and I'm going to do the biomechanical um, uh, assessments on somebody to figure out, you know, it's coming from their core, their foot, their pelvis. And, um, but then I'm going to pair it with some of the more holistic um, internal uh, patterns as well. I have to admit to you, Anna, <laughs> that uh, late, earlier that day before the shin splint incident, I had had some really, really spicy food. And Dr. Folkmore has treated me as a practitioner and knows I'm not really allowed to do that, especially <laughs> for the evening because I get hypersomnolence and talk in my sleep and stuff. And uh, I, in, instead of talking in my sleep, I had really sharing some stomach fire, I guess, <laughs> that showed up <laughs> really bad chance. But this morning, I'm, I could, this morning for breakfast, I was like, Oh, no, yesterday morning. I made something for breakfast. It was so good, but it was so spicy. And I was like, next time Kathy Julie comes to visit me, I'll have to make her this. And then I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> She's no. not to have this. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. Um, we've already learned that after, after the opposite of stomach time, after, you know, your 7 p.m. time, <laughs> Julie is not allowed. When the stomach is deficient, which is between five and seven, it has the least amount of energy, as Anna would tell you, and Dooley's not allowed, <laughs> as dinner time, Dooley is not allowed to eat anything spicy. So maybe if you gave it to me for lunch, <laughs> can have it, or breakfast. Uh, yeah. Just not dinner. So if you've not listened to Dr. Anna's AccuPoints collaboratives, you are missing out. They were 
so good. I'm sorry to plug them twice, but they got me so excited to study acupuncture again. I, I can't believe how you were able to take 12 channels and do that in two hours. <laughs> like, how the hell does somebody teach someone 12 channels in two hours? It's Dr. Folsmer. Um, and someone, so much to me and someone that was from Australia had written to us and said, holy God, you guys cover a lot in an hour. And they were like, we have to, I have to hit pause every 10 seconds and write things down. And I'm like, well, you have a handout. And they were like, no, it's just too good. I gotta write everything down, but you guys talk so New York fast. And I was like, well, I know, but uh, we just trying to get in as much information as possible. So if you've missed the acupoint, that, that will go along with shin splints. So shin splints are forefoot dominance and usually some channel stuff going on uh, with their gut. So just word to the wise. 100% of the time, if someone has shin splints, I ask them, do you like spicy food? They always say yes. Always, always, always. So Chinese medicine for the win again. Um, someone also asked about, uh, I think we already covered this, but I think maybe they may have come, come in late, but just in case uh, they need to hear it again. Um, they asked if, if um, spinal stability was important and uh, if we think there's a such thing as a core. Well, since we have a course named ID1 Core Concepts, we are certain that there is a core. And uh, we are very much into abdominal lumbal pelvic stability around the center of mass, which is L4, L5, L5S1. Yes, we do believe in uh, creating a spinal stable platform on a biped. It's very different for a quadruped. A biped needs extra help, uh, particularly uh, we that follow really, really bad positioning that we hold for hours that's not load shared. But we don't really call it spinal stability as much in ID. We call it load share. We believe in load share across an area, particularly the center of mass, L4, L5, L5S1, because it has the least amount of muscular support. Uh, and it does have fascial support from the anterior layer of thoracic lumbar fascia. It has some ligamentous support through the iliolumbar ligament. Um, it uh, has no muscular support whatsoever from the front between L4, L5, L5S1. And you also have the beautiful multifidus, which protects you from L4, L5, L5S1. Although in <laughs> the vast majority of people with lumbar spine stabilization problems, the multifidus is atrophied. And they've shown that in multiple studies and in meta-analysis. So yeah, we do believe there is a core. Andre Volimian thought there was one too. It's why he called it the intrinsic abdominal stability system or intrinsic core subsystem. So in ID one, two, three, four, five, six, we um, definitely uh, focus on breathing for stabilization of the center of mass. And we cover the ID cues, which you'll see on any of our Instagram posts, neck long, chin back, chest wide, ribs down, ASIS, PSIS, relatively even. And that's to create spinal load share, to maintain the lordoses and kyphoses of the spine, to help with shock absorption and cushioning of the vertebral discs, and to assure there's enough space between the vertebrae at the intervertebral foramina for the nerves to pass out. So again, ID5 will be covered in that as well. So yeah, yeah, we, we think there is such thing as spinal stability, and yeah, we do think there is such thing as a core. So, did we cover it all? Did we get it all? I think so. In an hour! Woo! Woohoo! So, great Very job to get there, folks. They kind of just, at the end, they got stimulated. I think they just needed to yeah. hear us talk a little bit, and maybe they needed to figure out how to use the chat box, or that was awesome. Those questions at the end were fantastic. Did I miss any of them? I don't think so. Okay. So, if we didn't get to your question tonight, just bring it next Saturday or next Sunday. Don't come Saturday, come Sunday. And uh, I'll post the link again on the Instagram and on the Facebook page. So, um, if you want to watch the recording of this, it's going to be only on our Immaculate Dissection Facebook page and our YouTube, which I've not changed the name of yet. It's still under my YouTube, Dr. Duly Noted, but I'll post that onto the Immaculate Dissection Facebook page. Go back and watch it. If you want to hear anything, fast forward through anything you don't want and, and go right to the thing that you want to hear if you'd like. But that will be posted for you tomorrow morning. So I'll get on top of it. All right. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Make sure if you have questions that haven't been answered, bring them back. If you can't be with us live, just uh, post it underneath the Ask Us Anything post that we do, uh, usually 24 hours before. And, and then we'll get to your question. If it's something that you think can't wait, you're going to forget about it, then you can just email it to me at drkathyduley at gmail.com or immaculatedissection at gmail.com. And we would love to take your questions and we'll hold them for next week. And we'll answer them to the best of our ability. Uh, thank you folks so much for your time and attention. Dr. Folkmore, any last words? Thank you all so much. We really appreciate you hanging out with us and, um, and it just whatever questions you have, let's, let's talk about them. It's exactly what this is for. So thank you for everyone that asked questions and participated and that turned out to just listen. So really appreciate, appreciate all of you so much. So much fun to get together with you guys. Missed you guys last week. Um,
And then Danny, any last words, our amazing hosts that saved the day tonight. Oh, stomach. But uh, anyways, yes, uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, just basically uh, similar sentiment to what uh, both of you guys said. Uh, you know, thank you everyone for joining. Um, you know, it was nice getting a few uh, surprise questions towards the tail. So, you know, so, so it, was, it was definitely something that sense. But uh, thank you guys for partaking and uh, looking forward to seeing you all again next week. Awesome. We'll see you folks next time and uh, make sure to bring your questions. Bye.